This is the comparison video you've all been waiting for. On the left, we have the Ender 3 V2, and on the right, we have... The Ender 3 is a mediocre printer in pretty much every way. So why is it still one of the best 3D printers to buy? When you get your first 3D printer, first of all, congratulations. But as far as learning resources go, you'll be lucky if you have a manual that uses complete sentences. And even then, you'll probably only have one or two pages at the end on how to start a print job. The best way to learn how to use your 3D printer is to find online content that's produced by and for the 3D printer community. Think about all the great YouTube channels you've learned from, and how much they've helped you become better at 3D printing. Even if you're an intermediate to advanced 3D printer user, if your printer breaks or you want to upgrade it, you're going to have to figure out how to do all those repairs and upgrades yourself. With my Ender 3s, I've always been able to find high quality, step-by-step -step guides on even the most complicated operations. So, in a way, as a printer gains mass market adoption, it becomes easier to use. Not because it's a better printer, but because of all of you in the 3D printing community chipping in and helping each other out. Speaking of helping out, can you help me reach that subscribe button down there? It's a little bit too far for me to touch it, but I, I really need to hit that button. This is the start of a series on Ender 3s, so stay tuned because you'll want to see the Ender 3. And like all great YouTube videos, this one starts with an unboxing. So as you can see here, this is a Micro Center open box 3D printer. Someone got this printer and then decided they didn't want it anymore. So they wrapped it up in a blanket and left it on the doorstep of a Micro Center. And thank God someone found them in time. Out of the kindness of my heart, I decided to adopt this printer. And I saved about 70 bucks. Let's just look at this other printer. It looks like it's in great condition too. These are like boxes of chocolates. There's a whole nother stack of parts underneath. I really got spoiled by some of the other printers where you just fold it up and it starts printing. But here we are in Ender 3 V2 land where we have to set aside an entire evening to put our 3D printers together. This was and still is one of the worst parts of the Ender 3 assembly process. Now as you hold the screw in place, you have to poke the Allen wrench through the back here and put it on that screw and then you kind of awkwardly hold these things together and turn this screw. This is what makes you part of the tribe, going through this shared suffering. Finagle the Allen wrench and then tighten it down. I don't know if I did this wrong or if this is just supposed to be wobbly. Doesn't seem like the best design but you know it's just one of those Ender 3 things. Here's the stock extruder from one of my old Ender 3 V2s. And if you look at the new extruder, you can tell it's made out of a different material. They upgraded it to a glass fiber reinforced plastic. So this should be a lot stiffer and last longer. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is this thing isn't even close to flat. To fix that, you're going to need to loosen some of these bolts to let it resettle. If you just want it to sit on three feet, that's fine too. It's just one of those Ender 3 things. We've got both of those legs a little bit loosey-goosey. We can just tap it. You see when I push down on the corners, there's no wobble. That's what we want to see. Now we're going to tighten all the screws on the bottom, so these should- oh man, that's- that's not very tight. Come on, guys. But you know what? That's okay. It's just one of those Ender 3 things. Black sheet metal covers up a lot of the vents that were designed into the power supply. Now this is going to make your power supply run a little bit hotter than it would otherwise. It sounds like a jet engine when it's running. It's just one of those Ender 3 things, and if you touch it, you are committing sacrilege. Just leave it alone. Don't touch it. We don't need a touch screen. We got the wheel. Everything's good. I mean, who would even want a touch screen? All right, have you had enough T-nuts yet? I haven't, because I need to put these T-nuts up here. These T-nuts. Now, if you're like me and you always had a hard time remembering which one of these was on and off, the better way to think about this is it's like zero and one. So it's like binary for whether it's on or off. Shout out to Devin for teaching me that. That's a pro tip that I'll remember for the rest of my life. So everything's all adjusted and ready to go. The last thing I need to do is just level the bed. And I'm going to put in the SD card that came with the machine. Um, I'm not seeing any prints on this card. It's a little worrying. So I'm going to go ahead and steal the SD card from the other printer. Okay, and now the printer is not responsive anymore, so... Oh! Oh! No! It showed up. Yeah, it seems like it just froze there. So when I turn the printer... Oh! When I turn the printer off on the back, the stuff pops up. So, there's something weird going on here. It might just be one of those Ender 3 V2 things. Let's keep rolling and put together this other Ender 3 V2. This one I'm not going to narrate, and we'll get an idea of how long it takes to put one of these machines together if you know what you're doing. It took about 30 minutes to do the assembly, and then about another 20 minutes to do bed leveling and tightening the wheels and so on. If you look at this screen, it's kind of wobbly. I'm going to put a chamfer, and that just helps make loading and unloading filament a lot easier. And I will just reinsert this here. 
I'm having a really hard time putting the Jesus clip on this thing. It's just a little semicircular clip that goes around the Bowden tube fitting and it keeps the Bowden tube locked in. And this one's orange so it's cooler and I'm using my Gucci pliers to install it. I can just put them in the pliers. Oh Jesus. That's why they call them Jesus clips. So I guess Creality wants you to take off this whole hot end cover if you want to reinstall that clip. But I am determined to get this to work. There we go. Nipex pliers for the win. And that's perfect timing, so the other printer just finished the print it was working on. And it looks pretty good. This is a very small print, and the level of detail on there is decent. I think this is one of Creality's best selling points, is that you get one of these machines, and you end up just being really impressed with the quality you get out of it. Let's do the cat print now on both machines. I haven't heard anyone else talk about this. When I have a failed print, instead of just giving up on it, I'll usually try and just tape the print back down to the print bed. This bottom piece actually became detached from the print bed. I just put a little piece of tape down to hold it onto there, and then the rest of the print printed on top of that tape. Huh. Actually, these two bed surfaces are a little bit different. So the bed surface here feels more like sandpaper. It's still like grinding my fingernails down, rubbing against it. The one over here is smooth. Seems like whatever Creality is using for their print beds tends to change from batch to batch. Anyways, let's try and break this off. That's nice and strong. I just preheated both of the printers and the Micro Center version actually took about 20 seconds longer to get up to 200 degrees Celsius. So for some reason the heater cartridge in this one is a little underpowered. The filament that came with the Ender 3 V2 was kind of smelly, so I had to open a bunch of windows and have my air purifier running. And I was having issues with the spools getting tangled. Looking inside the Micro Center Open Box Ender 3, you can see we've got board version 4.2.2. If we look at the wires that are plugged into the terminal blocks, you can see they don't have crimped ferrule ends on them. Now I'm planning on leaving one of these machines mostly stock, but crimped ferrule ends are something that I consider necessary to be able to run the machine safely and reliably. So I'm going to go ahead and put ferrule ends on both of these printers. I'll leave a link in the description to the tools that I use to do this. They're not super expensive and you can use these on a lot of different projects. All you need to do is take one of these ferrule ends and slip it onto the wire. Then come in with the crimping tool, make sure everything's seated properly, and attach it on there. I also come in and cut off any of the excess ferrule end, so this way you have a nice solid core all the way through. What's strange about this is ferrule ends cost less than a penny. The fact that they're not including these on the printer, even after it's been well documented that they're kind of a safety issue, leaving them just with the soldered ends, is kind of odd. And it seems to me that Creality really isn't interested in improving their old designs. They just want to keep cranking out printers. This variety pack has ferrule ends of all different sizes, so you should be able to cover just about any wire you come across. Let's turn our attention to the other Ender 3 V2 and see what's going on in that main board. This one is also board version 4.2.2 and this is the Amazon Prime one that I bought brand new. So I'm going to go through and do all of these with crimped ferrule ends also. For the best results you'll actually want to cut off this soldered bit just because ferrule ends are really designed to work on bare wire. So cut off the soldered portion and get some bare stranded wire and install these crimped ferrule ends. I think most people that get a 3D printer are doing it as a hobby, so being able to tinker with it and mess around and change stuff is a huge part of the equation of what brings value to the customers. So I'd really like to see more companies focus on using standardized parts and getting the price down while also maintaining high quality. People like direct drive extruders, people like Octoprint, and they're willing to pay a little bit extra for it. But when you add those features and you also make a bunch of stupid proprietary stuff on your printer, it kind of makes your product not as good in a, in a lot of ways as older printers like the Sender 3 V2. Um, I lost the screwdriver. This is why I could never do a live stream. I'm always losing my tools and then you have to wait 20 minutes for me to find it. Oh, there we go. And this is what your board should look like when you're finished. All of these have crimped ferrule lens on them now and this will be a lot safer. I'm a little disappointed that Creality is still using these shiny springs. It's been well documented that they lose bed level pretty easily because you can see if I just push on this, these screws will work themselves loose and your bed level will get ruined. By having stronger springs in there, like those yellow bed springs that people are always upgrading to, there's a lot more tension on these wheels and they don't come loose as easily. Both printers have firmware version 1.0.2. Based on what I found online, both of these machines have outdated firmware, so I'm gonna have to take these off and update the screen firmware first 
and then update the mainboard firmware. I downloaded the screen firmware from Creality's website, and on the website they call it touchscreen firmware, but I think they're just not using the right name for this. This isn't technically a touchscreen. And while we're at it, I'll do my second one at the same time. These use different types of screws, so I can't use the same Allen wrench. So you can see this one has the socket head cap screws, and this one has the button head cap screws, even though these are the same part and the same model of printer. You just take the SD card with the DWIN set folder dropped into it, and you plug it in right here. The red screen means that it's finished flashing the firmware. We'll turn that off, remove the SD card. To update the main board, all I did was put the bin file off of the Creality website onto this SD card and plug it in. And when I turn the machine on, it automatically rewrites the firmware onto the machine. If we look at the info screen, you can see I'm now on firmware version 1.1.2. I put a post out that is asking people, you know, where should I put googly eyes on this machine? The way I'm doing it is every vote equals one eye. Someone had a special request to put eyes on the extruder knob, so we got a couple eyes on there. I'll keep the poll open for the first 24 hours after posting this video, so if you're part of the notification squad or one of my subscribers, make sure to head over there and vote on that poll. The general theme of this series is going to be like Donut Media's High Car Low Car, so I'm going to call it High 3D Printer Low 3D Printer. I know, I'm really creative, right? But basically, one of these printers is going to be getting super premium upgrades. I'm interested in answering the question of, is it worth buying the super expensive upgrades and how much more performance do you get versus a machine with very modest upgrades that are focused on value and performance per dollar? I'm going to be going all out on this one, though. And you're going to see some crazy stuff. You know, sub five minute benchies and things like that. I'm looking forward to continuing to work on this series. And seriously guys, let me know in the comments if there's any mods you want to do. Just assume that on this printer on the right we have an unlimited budget. Go crazy with your suggestions. And just to let you guys know that I mean business, I want you to take a look at these mods that I've got so far. And this is just scratching the surface of what I plan on adding to this machine. I've got some sponsors coming in like Bontech and Slice Engineering that are going to be providing really high-end components. And on top of that, I want to hear your suggestions for what you think I should add to this printer. If you want to see the rest of High Printer Low Printer, make sure to get subscribed to the channel, ring the notification bell, hit the like button, and leave a comment. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.